G'day guys, it's Billy here from LostTreasure.com.au Well fellas, um, I thought I'd do a quick video um, About probably roughly six months ago a, um, An elderly farmer, um, Mr Bain, really nice old fellow Passed away um, And he actually made um, some pretty big headlines um, When he passed away he had no um, extended family, no children um, he had two other brothers and they were both the same and they had passed away in previous years before Mr Bain. But anyway guys, Mr Bain was um, one of those types of farmers, uh, whatever he used he would not get rid of. Like um, to say an old tractor broke down, um, they couldn't fix it, um, they park it to one side then they go and buy another tractor and they wouldn't trade in that previous tractor so every single bit of machinery they ever owned never got on sold uh, traded in or given away so this on april the 10th um, a lot of people would already know about this but there's a huge clearance sale in the town of dumbyong uh, 250 kilometers southeast of perth uh, 40 kilometers uh, east of wagen um, so on April the 10th is going to be Mr Bain's big clearing sale. Uh, after Mr Bain passed away, believe it or not guys, um, he, he um, left $5 million to the Shire of Dumbleyung, which is absolutely fantastic for the community. And he also gave every single one of his assets to the town of Dumbleyung as well, including his farm and all other assets such as vehicles and all that kind of stuff. So. On April the 10th, there's going to be a, a huge clearance sale, a farm clearance sale. He was a farmer. So anyway, guys, I'll get straight to the point. Um, so on April the 10th, big clearance sale. It's going to be hundreds and hundreds of um, very old vintage items, uh, relics, um, and everything else. So everything's getting sold. It's going to be huge, and I think the town of Dumbyong is expecting many, many people and one of the reasons guys um, is they're expecting many many people um, apparently I've already heard rumours around the internet that, it, that this is going on but anyway what you can see here is a beautiful old 1971 Valiant Charger um, and believe it or not guess how many miles it's done 1971 it's only done 7,000 miles okay and there's so many rumours that I've heard going around that this charger here, this Valiant charger, could go for well over a hundred thousand dollars. I'm not too sure. I've I just did a bit of research before on Valiant chargers, and there's a lot for sale for in the vicinity of fifty thousand dollars or fifty grand. Um, but anyway, those Valiant chargers that I saw previously, they had over you know, 120,000, 150,000 miles on it. So basically this um, beautiful old Valiant Charger is going to be auctioned off. And it, I've heard um, rumours and expectations that, you know, bids could be well in advance of $100,000. And obviously, as you can see, um, it could have broken down or they got sick of using it and it's just been parked underneath the shed probably for the last uh, 40 well over 40 years because I'm 43 so it's 43 years old so it's going to be a big big day guys so if anyone in Western Australia is interested in um, attending um, I'll also put the link to the official website so anyway fellas I'll go on to the next lot of um, items what he's selling and also at the end of this video I will um, uh, scroll down a complete list of all the main bits and pieces what are going to be for sale like here's the next item a nice old Ford truck a uh, beautiful tractor I'm sure that you'll be able to read once I finish this so I'll do the scrolling down that's a nice old antique lathe uh, another one or it could be the same one. Beautiful old vintage antique bulldozer, that one. Uh, this is just um, temporary uh, fencing, a mobile fencing unit. 
how the nice old bulldozer probably an international tractor of some kind Mr Bain's old um, car whenever um, prior to Mr Bain passing away um, I actually owned the post office in Dombeyong and um, Mr Bain he only had one leg and he'd you know battle on into the post office and you know I'd always give him a hand and carry out the paper for him and um, in, you know hours later I'd look out the window and he'd be there reading his paper so he'd be literally there for you know sometimes five or six hours reading his paper and they were Mr Bain was a bit of a loner so he just enjoyed his own company and there's that beautiful Valiant Charger so here's the list of everything or all the main uh, bigger items for sale on the 10th of April and like I say it only includes bigger items so who knows um, what other smaller items such as old fuel boxes and any other antique stuff will be for sale but if you attend you'll see it on the day And just a quick couple guys, you notice these ones here, the Yamaha AG100 motorbike with only 6 kilometres on the clock, it's pretty amazing. And the one below, Honda 185S XL motorbike, 2 kilometres on the clock. See that's exactly what they were like guys, amazing. So there's going to be a lot of equipment in out there, probably in outs. Well, the Bain boys, as they were commonly known, were quite unique fellas, and uh, we were very lucky to have them as neighbours since the early 60s. We always got on very well with them. They were as honest as the day was long. They were hard workers. And, um, uh, and the article in today's paper has probably not done them justice, uh, where it said that they, they would run and hide if anybody came around. Well, we never, ever found them like that, but Ian was always 
ready to have a chat with anybody. They they grew up on the family farm, and unfortunately, because they lost their father fairly early on in life, and yeah. they had a lovely mother. Mrs. Bain was would be one of the nicest people that you'd ever come across. But yes. unfortunately, she met her demise back in the mid eighties, and and then um, it, they they were great guys. The Phil was the first one to go. Yeah. He was 72, and then Big John um, last year because he passed away in the February. And Ian, both Ian and Phil wound up with diabetes, and um, Ian wound up having to go to Perth and for dialysis, and that just about broke his heart having to leave the farm. So their mother probably looked after him far too well. They were <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Ian and and John particularly were excellent cricketers and footballers and that sort of thing and they were always very community minded they did a lot for for the for the local fire brigade and all that sort of stuff and um they they were quite community minded but always took a back seat sort of thing and they were the hard workers behind the scenes sort of guys that worked seven days a week yeah and uh they they were hard workers but they were just fabulous neighbors uh, you know if they got a got a sheep of ours that had got through a fence and we'd finished shearing. It had come back shorn yeah. and, and the wool would be in a wool pack. <laughs> now, how often does that happen? And, and they're excellent shearers, the boys, and they used to do quite a bit of shearing back in the early days. And, oh, no, definitely not surprised about the intent. And he was the one that, that helped get the men's shed where it was. Uh, he left them a donation, a very sizable donation because... Uh, they said, oh, how um, he asked just how much they needed. And they said, oh, about $50,000. So he, re he wrote them out a check. But he said, well, what am I going to do with it? Because I've got no one else to pass it on to. Yeah. And he said, if it's going to benefit the Shire and uh, and the people of Dunbarang, that was their idea. And uh, and the other two boys probably would have done the same thing if they had a survived thing. You wouldn't get better. So it's going to be a good day, guys. So feel free to subscribe, uh, like, add to your favourites, share the video and comment, ask any questions and have a great day. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.